What did we learn this week, and specifically about where the economy is headed, maybe more importantly than what you think, what the Fed thinks? Is there evidence, in fact, in the CPI and other numbers that, in fact, we're getting our arms around inflation? Well, we learned that progress is being made on the war against inflation, but economic damage has yet to be seen. We had two data points for the bulls and the bears this week. For the bulls, CPI and PPI both moderating. Great to see sticky areas like shelter starting to become a tailwind. But for the bears, hawkish Fed speak and also negative retail sales for March. That's four out of five months there. And that concerns us that overall, we still have economic downside ahead of us, perhaps lower earnings going forward. And market valuations with the S&P above 4,100 likely has a tough time going 4,200 to 4,400. If it gets to that level, I think we just stay in a trading range and then go back down from there until we clear the decks on what we think is likely coming up, which is a mild recession. And the Fed, 25 basis points in May. What do you think, Sarah? We think the Fed is one and done, one more 25 basis point rate hike in May. But what we haven't seen yet is now 13 months ago was just the first Fed rate hike. And we have not seen the effects of monetary tightening through the economy. We did just see it recently with the banking system. I think there's more to come in terms of how higher interest rates are going to impact, for example, the consumer, tighter credit conditions. That's going to impact the economy, which is why we're expecting that slowdown going forward. Christina, one and done. No, I don't think the Fed is going to hike rates again. I think the odds are increasing that they won't, and I think that is the right decision. The Fed has already done enough, and I do believe that they're going to be relatively comfortable with the pace of inflation, especially since we've seen progress made in services X housing, which is the component of inflation that the Fed is laser focused on. Are they not going to hike rates, Christina, because in fact we're headed toward a recession? <laughs> they see that. They're not going to hike rates because inflation is coming down at an appropriate pace that they're comfortable with, and they're not going to hike uh, rates because they know that there are lagged effects of monetary policy. So we haven't yet seen most of the damage that has been done by the aggressive tightening cycle. But no recession, you think? Well, I think that there is a pathway. It has narrowed, but there is a pathway to a semi-soft landing. If we get a recession, I think it's going to be mild. Sarah, recession, no recession. We're in the mild recession camp. And the reason that we think the Fed has more work to do with raising interest rates is because they've been clear that their mandate is 2% inflation as a target. I don't think they're going to take the foot, their foot off the gas until we get closer to that number. And we're just not near that yet. Um, the other uh, thing we're concerned about is earnings. Now, coming into first quarter, it was nice to see that earnings estimates actually were cut to a higher amount than usual. So Q1 earnings may come out all right in terms of revenue growth. Margins will continue to be compressed for this quarter and going forward. And I think that positive revenue growth we see this quarter may have difficulty holding up because revenues right. have been growing because of pricing power. And as inflation continues to moderate, companies may lose their pricing power. Sarah, what about credit? There's a lot of talk about a credit crunch, whatever that means. Or certainly there's tightening credit, it appears. Uh, is that more likely to slow down the economy, Sarah? I think it is, because the consumer and the employment market has been what is holding up the economy here. And with the mini banking crisis that we saw, we expect banks to tighten credit. And that will make it tougher for the, for the consumer. And just thinking about banks more broadly, they're going to probably have issues going forward with tighter regulations, tighter capital requirements, and pressures on their net interest margins, even though we saw today with J.P. Morgan an unusually positive uh, net interest margin, net interest income for them. But I think that was unusual and will normalize to the downside going forward. So I think that a lot of it depends on how much credit conditions tighten. And I think there's a big difference between what's happening with regional banks and what's going to happen with the major national banks. Um, what I hear from my contacts at, at the big banks is that we are not tightening credit conditions, but what we are doing is adhering more closely to our own lending standards. So a very mild tightening of credit conditions, whereas the regional banks, um, some have been under pressure and conditions are going to tighten significantly. So then the question becomes, what is the impact on the economy? I think that um, it's certainly going to uh, be a, a negative, a source of negative pressure. But at the same time, I also believe it could be a positive in that the Fed sees that some of its work is being done for it by those tightening credit conditions, and then, of course, de decides not to hike rates any further. Exactly. What about that, Sarah? Are the credit conditions actually doing the Fed's job for it? Does it make it less likely it will actually have to have one and done? I think credit conditions did some of the Fed's job in March, a couple of weeks before the March Fed rate hike. 
markets were expecting 50 basis points. The banking crisis took 25 basis points off of that, and we just got 25 going forward. I agree with Christina. Regional banks are more at risk than larger banks, but these large deposit flows that we've seen come from regionals to large money center banks likely moderates from here, and we probably even see some attrition from that going forward. And then the larger banks also have these capital markets businesses that are down significantly, which is going to be an issue going forward. In the larger bank category, we'd, we'd stick with diversified companies like Morgan Stanley because of their strong wealth management business or ING. But generally, we're not positive on banks overall because of the structural issues they're going to have going forward, which started over a year ago.